Hello, and Angel Fairlands, and this is the last charter of Master in Shining from the Data Science Learning Community. And we are going to talk about today about performance. The main objective of this charter is to for your poor performance prototype app into a fast one capable to handle thousands to 10,000 of users simultaneously. So we are going to see the tools that you need to, to, do, to order to, to achieve that goal. That is really hard, you know, that like maybe after you create your app, this is the, the phase that you are going to, to spend more time in the development plan. That's why they explain, even create models is part of prototype. When you start understanding what makes your app slow, you are going to start making changes. Of course, the, the testing part is really important to make that because you are going to start making changes and you want to, to, to keep your, your app accurate. So we're going to see how to benchmark our app using the shiny log test package to simulate multiple users in the same computer. That's the way that we can define how many computers, how many, yeah, how many computers do we need to serve across the users? We expect to see that uh, many, many users can use the same machine, so can connect to the same R process. Also, we are going to explode how to audit our app using Google Lighthouse. Is there is a Node.js package to evaluate the front end performance. And also it have a, good, a really good metrics and it's a really good way to track uh, the, uh, the quality of our Chinese app. It, it's not also work for Chinese apps, it works for any web page, but we also can use it for Chinese apps even they are running locally. Also, we are going to profile our app to define a performance bottlenecks. We can use a Provis package to pin, a pinpoint a, the slower code. And also we can use shiny Tito JavaScript, a, a, a JavaScript script that can measure the difference between a JavaScript events in the in the Shiny app. We are also going to explore techniques to optimize our code, like moving the data preparation code outside of the app, making the code faster, changing the reactive and output, no, catching, catching the reactive and outputs, and applying a physiological principle to make your app feel faster. Like, if you cannot make it faster, make it feel faster. Also, it works. Because you, you are making ads for people, not for computers. They start making an analogy that the shiny apps are like a restaurant where the server is the kitchen, when everything, all the dishes get prepared. The users, the app, are our customers. The request that they make is an order, and the art process is a chef. But we need to understand something. Uh, our chef only can start a new order after any appear one. It's single thread. Art is single thread, unless we made the event in the, in, independent to the main program flow uh, by using uh, I sneak programming techniques. So this is the way that the our Chinese server open source works. So you just have one R process that serves many people. Uh, it doesn't have any uh, capacity to make a, a different. It just only works for for low demands, uh, like a proof of concept, you know. Uh, now, the first step that you want to uh, do is making your chef more efficient. And that is profiling. 
watching the chef when he's working and find uh, to find the bottlenecks. Like uh, you don't start making changes. You also you will start. Oh, how is working? What are the process? Also, uh, we are going to optimize the process by brainstorming the ways that uh, to help the work faster, like hiring a pre cook who can come before the first customer and shoot some vegetables. Uh, so prepare the data, maybe overnight, you know, invest the time uh, saving, uh, invest in a time saving gadget. Maybe you can, you know, buy a better uh, KNF or a better machine the, in our world would be, maybe use a better our package, a faster one. And also we can add more, more, more process uh, to the restaurant. And we see here the image of a shiny proxy that's an operational solution that can take many, uh, many processes, our processes in different containers and serve each individual container to each individual user. Uh, by default, it's not the most efficient way to do it, but if you if you have a DevOps person there yeah, that works with Kubernetes, you can integrate that with Kubernetes and make a better balance. So at the end, after making all those changes, you, you can know major journey up uh, faster enough to serve infinity people. At some moment, you will need to increase your resources. So you have two alternatives. You can add more equipment, more memory, of course, uh, to scale up. So uh, having a bigger machine, or you can add more machines to the process that is scaling up. Let's talk about benchmarking. It will help you to figure out how many users each process can handle. And that's really important. Yeah, that was maybe my most important question. Like, oh, how how more how much computer capacity do I need? For example, I want to propose a shiny app in my company. How is the performance? You need to finish the shiny app to really have a number and know also what is the behavior that the people are going to use the, the app. How it works, you start recording a simulating a typical user with shiny low uh, record session. Then you will replay uh, that screen multiple continuous users with a shiny can not a Java package and realize the result using the shiny low test report. That, that's the main step. Let's see on details. So we need to start an alpha terminal and copy the URL. The URL. Why from the terminal? Because you don't want to, you want to have your R sessions uh, available uh, to, to run the other parts. It's like you are running a background R session. That's easy to use if you have R installed in your computer. Just, you can just ask for a new uh, a new session, I think, open in a new project. But use, I'm using Chinese, ser uh, no, RStudio server. So I don't have that capacity. So the, the way I was able to, to do it was for, for the terminal, for in this command. In this case, I'm defining the port manually. So the other example would work just using that port. Normally, you, you, you keep a plan, and, and R will also find out a free port and by random to, to, to run the app. When you have the app running in another R session, you need to paste that, that, that direction. And, and that would 
start another, that will open another a shiny app that now it, it will record your steps. So you will need to simulate how your you how the user is going to make the changes in the app. And after closing the app, um Chinese Lotus we, we save this file with all the instructions, all the changes that you did uh, in that in that app. And, and then you will use that for the next step. I just moved that to the example of this uh, GitHub repo. So to use Shiny Cannon to, to make the simulation, uh, you we need to install a uh, install it from, from the terminal, your computer, maybe in the Mac or Windows, it changes. Uh, across part but what you have you can run it it's a a terminal program so you will find your record log you will place where the shiny app is running and you will define the number of workers and how much time they will spend making these tasks and also uh, the, the folder to save the results so in this case, I run uh, uh, three times with one worker. This is really important to use it with one worker because that is the idea situation. That's where one uh, user won't affect any other user because the R session is always available to make any changes. Then I try with five workers and we, I end up with 10 workers. Then you will uh, load the data frame and do the test that you, you created into R. And with that data frame, you can run the, the report. I ran into a problem related to the one package G, G table. Uh, G table was making a problem. And I was luckily to see that the, the, the responsible of the package, that is the original Shani developer, uh, John Shem, uh, was solving that problem uh, yesterday. And he didn't integrate it just because uh, is it was in the pull request. I think, yeah, the, I think this one. And he didn't integrate it because he's missing a unit test to about that happens again. But even though using remotes, you can install that from the from <laughs> the branch that he has a merge into the main. So yeah, I installed from that branch and yeah, it, the, the reports work really well. Yes, but yeah, it's a it's a temporary solution before he he makes the, the changes into the main and, and then report it to, to Crown. Here is the report that, that the object it takes some some minutes to, to log here. If you just open the file is faster, but I didn't want to, to move from the presentation. So this way. And yeah, now I can use it. So the to me the most interesting part is this one. It shows all your your sessions and how they were performing. That's for one user. And here you can see for five users, and you see that the lines are really close to the one user. The 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 empty space with no color means that the waiting times so like uh, users maybe won't click all the uh, the clicks faster. They will click and then we, they will see the resource to understand what they are watching. So that's why. Uh, those waiting times are good because uh, if, if people are just wa is watching the results, 
it's time that the child process can, can help another person. So basically the results for this app are really good. You see for one use the the event workflow is almost a straight line. It doesn't have a it doesn't change much if I change the users. The latency is low, the main duration is almost the same. This is the even the 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 longest one. And yeah, I don't see a really big difference. Of course, we have some outliers here, but no, not too much time because it's just 0 0.2 seconds of difference, you know, like, uh, and, and just for a few events. For most of them, you see 15% uh, of the result as, as just of the one user. So yeah, my computer, in my computer, where the server, you know, uh, I can really make sure I ensure that I can use the, the app for for 10 users and even more, but I didn't test it uh, for more users. So we are uh, resource. We also can use the, the Lights House uh, toolkit in, in your browser. I'm using Chromium, but it's also available in Chrome. You have this feature, network, console. You have Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. You just need to select desktop and analyze the load. And it will show you the results. Uh, here, I'm using an example Chani app, but it's also available in the example, but we're going to, to see it later. But yeah, the performance of this app is really good. Everything between 90 and 100 is excellent. So the most important metrics here are the, the, two, uh, the two first ones, but I see that this app is great in all parts. It's because it's really simple. It's just uh, something some, based on distributions. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a good feature because it has many metrics. It has a good documentation. So if you don't have a good metric in your Shiny app in one of these tests, you have information to find, ah, I need to improve in this part. Uh, what we can do to improve that, that performance. Uh, now let's talk about the profiling. So if we have this function, F, and we start a pause of two seconds, then we call J, J is a pause of one second, and then it equals Y, and Y is a pause of three seconds. And at the end, we just return them. It's a really simple function, but that will help us to find how the time distribute across the, across F. So you, if we try to run the, the function manually, mentally, uh, we say, oh, F, F from J, J from H, but also F from H. And we see it in just the, the in this diagram, we see that F is always executed. The first two seconds, nothing happens because we are paused. Then it start J, the first second, happen anything because it is false. And then the, 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 the remaining three seconds of the function is running H. But later after ending the, the J function, it will start the Y function just from the H. So that's the way that it compiles. And so the it's not it's not so important at the very beginning how high is the is the bar. The important thing is how with the width of the bar. So how much time would take? So it will run the profile function in this way, just calling F. We see a really similar view. It's not exactly the same because it's not like R is taking a snapshot at every second. It's, it takes snapshot at intervals of 10 milliseconds and then it tries to give you a picture, but it's the same. It's like we are running F across all the time. So we start with F with some pause, two second pause, you, I take two seconds. 
then one second just for Jay, three seconds uh, running uh, Jay. So all this part is J, and then we just run the three seconds for five. So the total time to run there is nine seconds. And this millisecond that is error, you know, basically. <laughs> And now we can use the same function and put it in a simple shiny app. It's just a button, push me, that will run the F based on that event and just uh, show that result. Uh, the book have a really, a really simple image for this part, but I prefer just to show the reality that you will see. So it's like, the first uh, three milliseconds doesn't matter much. And your function have really is starting here. And despite of the event, reactive function, all this part, you see the same structure here. So you have the F, the, the J, the Y, the, in the same times. Now, uh, right than taking the app, uh, the function to run uh, nine seconds, it would take 12. Maybe because the time it took me to to press the bottom, you know, <laughs> uh, when I was running the, the app. So in profanity, um, have some limitations. There are some things to uh, see functions behind R that don't check if you, you want to interrupt the, the function. In those cases, we cannot profile those functions. It's not a good practice. It's not that you're spending most of the functions, but it can happen. If you use system sleep in your function, also a profile pro, profits doesn't, doesn't see that time because really is a stopping the app at all. It's like R is not running, so it cannot, R cannot check how much time it's taking. It's something like that. So that's why we were using pause in the in the function. Pause is a function in the profits package. And also that with data from internet won't be tracked by R. For things that that cannot, cannot check, uh, you, we also have the alternative to use the Shiny TikTok script. It, it was sharing the Shiny conference from, from Axelon. And you just need to add this tag uh, to your function. And after adding that and running your app and making the changes that you want to, to make, you'll be able to, to explore a report HTML report and also uh, export the, the data as a CSV to, to measure how uh, your JavaScript is running. It's like, despite measuring how is the R code running, the, the Shiny T dot is trying to measure the time between JavaScript events that happens after running and after running the events. So it's like uh it's more like in the front end part. And here we can see the, the report after I make some changes. So yeah, it, it seems like it doesn't take much time between events. Uh and maybe for more heavy apps that would be more useful. But I also want to to share that it's really easy to to perform this, this kind of, of profiling techniques to uh, the tool. And testing JavaScript, uh, uh, profiling, and uh, this is another chapter. Uh, to improve performance. Now we are going to see the improved performance, but 
let's let's try to reproduce in uh, what I did in a, in the in our live video. So we can start. Uh, ah, and also to explain you how the example for the words. So if we go to example of this repo, the book, and we have in performance. Uh, you will see uh, the Docker file related how I I installed Shiny Candle. So I it was based on the Rocker Tidyverse. A image and we install cool because it's in the it's a package to download files and we download trusting in the output and just keeping the same name that, that's the old and we save the file and install it using this instruction and install all the dependencies needed and also remove the file because we are not going to use it anymore in the and this is the the container and based on this image is the container I'm running i also have a running instruction that's how i run them in my computer but i keep it as an example uh, i i add all these 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 flats because I don't want to, I want to keep the session interrupted because I'm using our studio, but I don't want to to keep my my terminal running. That I I want to keep using my terminal. I I disable the authentication because I'm using my local computer. I don't I don't need to apply any password. Uh, I want to see them in this in this port on my local host. And this is my local folder to, to save all my my for my my R package. And here is my local folder where I save all my projects. So you, you need to, to change those volumes uh, in your case to reflect your reality. The, the other ones are constant. Do the container. And here is also the the image that is also available in Docker. And yes, I run it using Chromium, but you can ignore that part. You will need to run your, you will, you will need to create your own ROM expression, even though you pull the, the, the image from Docker. Now that we are clear how to run uh, the Docker part, how to install it, uh, we can run the app. Here's the app. You also you can see the shiny TikTok tag here. You just in the beginning you just put it and it will make the, the work for you. So the first thing that we need to do is to run the app. So I will use this this script from the terminal. So now you see that the, the app is running in that port. Uh, but you know that port is in Docker, not in my local computer. I go to that port, I won't see anything. But that doesn't matter. I don't need to see anything. Now in my console here, that is available, I can roll record the session. And now we will open another, another app. And this is the part that is recorded. So I apply all these changes. I go, I change the tab. And now I can close and now it's safe. Here I, ah, I want to move this performance to the folder. I don't want to do it because it, it just save it here in the in the in the top. I will just remove it because I already have one. I, I don't want a new one. And now we we can run this test. Uh, for example, I will I will go to the terminal and I will open a new terminal. I have a new one here. Ah, it's part of the process. Maybe can, I have a new terminal. So I have terminal one running the shiny app and go to terminal two. And I will paste the work. And I will change the folder. I don't want uh, to keep it default. So I, I will 
test them so it won't override the, the, the report that we already did. And now if they start wrong. And I will stop it because we don't want to, to wait five minutes between in one start session. But that's the process. You, you will go to the folder, uh, examples, and we go to test sessions. We see the, the term for the I, I was I asked to create. We also uh what else? What else? I want to see the app running. Okay, now we, we want to see the TikTok in the lighthouse. Uh look, I, I'm not able to 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 check it. You know, to me that's part that I don't know how to how to do it. Maybe how to open uh in the browser. So I do is just run the app and uh, for the other part just from the script. So I have the app here. Now we run it. I need to keep it open for some reason. So I just copy the link and paste it here. We are closing the app. And now I can start moving the, the app again. Why? Because we want to export uh, using the Chinese Twitter, the, the, the report. So we go here more tools, the tools, and we go to the console, and you will be able to write this column. And you need, I, I was trying to paste it. You need to, to type it. This is like I typed it before. It remembers that I do it. So now you can just run it and it will download the report from my computer. And that's the same report which we were watching. Fewer steps, it's like I did fewer clicks just in this demonstration. But you see that you have the, you are able to check. And also uh, from this view, we can go and see the lighthouse. And you can also run the lighthouse test uh, from a no session. If you want, if you need to do it for many times. They also say that the measure will change from time to time. They are, this number, you don't need to take it as a ah, standard number, and I don't make any change to my app. It won't change. It will change. So they recommend just to take the mean of this result. So you, you would have to run and try to make, ah, what is the mean of my performance? In the picture I showed before, I got 91. Let's see if the result increase. Oh, yeah, now you see 90. It's not, you know, a big difference, but it changed a little bit the performance part. Now we can close. And let me check if, yeah, also cancel the, the app. So we are not going to use them. And yeah, I'm not using this chapter. Okay. Yeah, we can Now we now that we saw how we can apply all those techniques that it's not so hard to do it when you have the, the right configuration. Uh, now let's talk about improve the performance. Uh, you need to find the slow uh, slowly thing in the profile and try to speed it up. So isolate the problem in a single function. Make a minimal a sketch of the code that requires that recreates the slowness. It's like you don't want to run the app every time, so you try to use a minimal Chinese ad, maybe or a a minimal part of code, or just create a function that runs the load part. Uh, so you can you don't need to run the app, uh, the entire app just to improve this part. Uh, write a few tests. Uh, for the results, because the easiest way to make code faster is to make it incorrect. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Oh, I went to a function and I tried to speed it up and I see something that is slow, but I don't remember 
why I, why I did this, why I did that. And yeah, let me just make it simple. There's no reason. When I see, oh, the problem. Oh my gosh, I just miss it up my, my function. So yeah, before you start changing your, improving your function, write some tests. Uh, so you you are said you are sure that you are not changing your results unless you want. Uh, run the, sni the snippet multiple times as you try to uh, try out to possible improvements. So yeah, it's not like, oh, you make a change and then you try to profile. Uh, another alternative is caching. It's really useful if many people want to see the same results, you know, many times. How it works? Uh, you record the inputs and the outputs from every core of a function. When the cache function is, ca is called with a cell input that is already seen, and uh, replace the record output with a re recomputer. It's like, oh, I remember, like when you, like the multiplication table, you don't need to make the math because you know what are the inputs and you know what are the values related. And you know that uh, five times five is 25. You don't need to calculate it manually or even make any kind of sum. You just know it. And that's catching, just memorizing the results. It works with any reactive or any render function. It was really simple. You just need to, to pass the result or the reactive to the cache and indicate the keys uh, the input value related. So they know, oh, we are passing the same input values. So you don't, I don't need to apply all the reactive or the low function. I just need to remember the value of this reactive. And the same we run the test. One good example, that a good use of, of caching is when you call an API. For example, design a function to get people have been working on lately. But I have been the, the last action on GitHub for its username. And the, he is like, oh, the lady for Harley takes this time to get the, the API call and the, here are the results. And you just place that in that into reactive and then render a table. But you can avoid getting asking for that API call. You just grab in the bind cache. You 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 need to select uh, the username related, but also the system day. Why? Because you don't want after one day, after one week, just getting the same result that you uh, received the first time you ran this app. So you want to define a certain time to say, hey, after this time, please update the cache. <laughs> and that, and they say that they recommend a day. Maybe a day is okay. The cache has fixed total size, so you won't accumulate data from past days. So it's not like, ah, you will cache the, the, the data from Harley for all the eternity, no. He just have 200 megabytes. Uh, in smart, it's smart enough to automatically move the later recently that I use when you need more space. So you say, oh, the last time I used this cache was one month ago. Remove it. <laughs> uh, you don't need that. For, for catching plugs, that's a little bit harder to make. It's a little bit trickier because the plots in Shiny resize based on the your computer screen. So they they catch a plot with fixed sizes, but it thinks that you you can smooth that restriction somehow. Uh, but they don't explain too much. They, you need to read the documentation and, and test that for your use cases.
they explain here uh, the, the character should always include all the reality inputs in the expression. Here you see a really bad example because the reality is the result of zooming S plus Y. But in this case, you just caching based on else. So every time you have five plus five and you got 10, for example, then if you have another five and maybe eight here in the Y, and rather than 13, you will get the same 10 as before. That's horrible. Give the cache keys simple as possible. Don't use large data set because it's expensive to figure out if a large data frame has already been seen. Yeah, you cannot, you know, place long things here in the keys. Try to make them simple. So you won't uh, spend many computer time just ask, oh, have we have seen this data frame before? Let's go over column by column and value by value. <laughs> so the default cache scope is this. Uh, the plot cache is stored in a memory. Uh, in memory, they say in RAM. Uh, it's never bigger than 200 megabytes. Is shared across all using in a single process. And it lost, it lost when the app restarts. That's the default. But we also have more, more options to extend the scope. Uh, if you exchange data between users, it's a concern. We can separate the cache from each user session. So if you define bind cache in select session. Uh, you, only want, you only go to save cache for each individual session. So, you know, you will use the, the benefit of caching the results, but yeah, you, you won't have problems with, with the, with, with the data uh, permissions. If you want to share the cache across multiple processes, so, if it doesn't matter how process will start, you, you will need to store the cache on disk using this option. Shiny options, cache, cache, cache on disk. We can chain multiple caches together and write on our custom storage backend with the cache package, that is the backend of this function. And yeah, you, you, you will need to read the documentation to make that possible. But it's also a possibility to to cache more things than just individual parts. Mm -hmm. If you, it's important that you know that every time a new session starts, uh, the server function is called. So if you have a very uh, demanding function, for example, reading a CSV file, uh, put it outside of the server function. So you make it the, the preparation before, even overnight. Um, but that's, you know, the data is always the same. You need to change the data based on the user, that's another problem. <laughs> but your, your start point is always the same. Try to, to take out of the server function as much as you can, because you don't want the user to wait too much time before they can use the app. Uh, try to use efficient ways to 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 read data. To read data, use the data table fast read. Use Broom. Use a uh, refather or use a uh, parquet files. I also like using the binary of F F T in R. Yeah, this package. Uh, it, 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 it rewrites speed. So it, it, it reads really fast in comparison of base R, data table, father. So yeah, it, I, I love to use this package to, to read data. It's a binary data, binary data. So they explain that, yeah, even though you use the R read, it, it's much faster to use this binary file.
and also trying to to manage by design you know the 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 performance and split out in total you know as fewer things you have in your in a tab the faster will be your shiny app because shiny won't calculate uh, things outside of that tab you know that's important to know a uh, require a button before it's a long running operation and let the user know what's happening and how how much time it take you know there are packages that help you to say hey we are in, in that percentage of the process and if you require significant work to happen on the start make sure to design you are so that you are can still appear so that people let you let the user know uh, that they need to wait for that. I saw an article um, in Axilo that they explained that they have um, an app that requires one minute just to, to 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 get used to to get loaded. So what they did is to define a server that before people ask for the session, it start the session. You know. So we have the, the app loaded. So when people ask for uh, enter to the session, the, the session was already loaded. So we need to try to don't, don't keep people waiting. If, if you want to keep the app responsive while some, spe uh, some special operation happen in the background, it's time to let us async uh, programming or use the new extended task function. And here are your some resources. We go, let's go over a little bit in, the, in this new feature that they can extend up. It's like, it was part of the Shiny conference with a few months ago. And Yoshem was explaining that Shiny has used to be really, use Shiny async was really hard to do it. So they just release a function. And for example, they have, you have a, this problem and you have a huge uh, task that takes a lot of time. What we can do? And what we can do is to break it with the standard task. So it's like, it would mimic the response onto the process end. Like, hey, you received this task, but it won't wait until finishing that. And before solving the, the rest of the reactive graph. And one is done, yeah, it would enable to update the, the other parts. Yeah, I mean, maybe here you have uh, maybe the example was before the, before the chart. Mm. This is for Python. Yeah, it's available also. The feature is available in Python. Mm. And with R. So we have this as slow. Reactive five seconds and then a message. This is the message uh, out. Then you can just add a that's a R seat object. Uh, call a new extended task. So you call future and you just place the same uh, activity that you used to have in your uh, Reactive. So you will use this right now using a reactive. So when you press go, it will invoke some the stars. And then you just need to place the result and it will manage to, to change the, the result just after uh, ending the task and we keep the app responsive. So that's that's the the new thing and it's also work for, for Python and he also show how you can do it in the using Python. And also have the this reference. And that's the end.
of our our chapter. Any questions? Any comments, Carlo? Yeah, very very good. Thank you for you know assembling this uh you know the 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 whole the whole chapter into this you know uh easy to follow uh the topics um from my from my experience and i haven't you know done much uh you know sh shiny uh shiny coding or, or profiling in our you know I've, I've 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 done most of those steps more in in python uh but one aspect that i have found especially for you know improving the performance in in the apps is the you know what we were saying about the the reading reading of files especially you know big files uh you know that you have to use you know certain techniques to try to you know uh ingest uh, that data faster before the app you know uh appears to the user uh uh using using uh you know a, 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 a serialization uh procedure you know like, like feather a spark etc you know that that really helps because uh you know instead of ingesting all at once and then presenting the app it's going to ingest you know that in chunks and then you know the app can run while the you know the data is still is still been been is still been, been loaded and depending on how you know you start using your app uh is going to manage you know that uh you know that 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 mechanism is going to manage you know which of the of the chunks you know have, have priority over others so that's that that's one thing that you know that you know is 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 uh is is good to you know to experiment uh with mm -hmm. instead of just you know using the regular read csv etc also excel files are notorious for being very slow you know in, in charging for the app so that there are ways that you can manage you know to try to to get them getting get them get a little bit uh, speed, speedier and the other one is about the catch the catch you know uh, function it's interesting that uh python has what is called uh, python has uh, what is called decorators I don't know if you are familiar with them. No, uh, they're new to me. Yeah, uh, decorators are uh, functions that uh, what what they do is that it it it, it interacts specifically with the function when the decorator is used. So, for example, if you use the decorator scroll catch, okay, which is you know part of a of a Python package for decorators. What it's going to do is basically what you explain with the bind catch. What it's going to do is that it's going to catch the results of any function. So when you invoke the function again, it's not going to run the function. It's just going to present the result. Okay. Uh, so that, that uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a trick, you know, to get to get a faster response from that particular function and it's and it, and it's compute you know uh 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 you know uh, the the using the compute resource a little more effectively because if you have a function that for example you know a matrix calculation right yeah usually matrix calculation you know takes some 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 resources so what you do is that you use that decorator in python to when you do it the first time you know you you have to wait right you know, because the first time you have to, you know, get that result. But once you do that, every time you invoke that function with the same parameters, it's going to give you the result. So uh, the, the the catch, you know, uh, technique is really useful for that. Uh, uh, as long as you know, you know, how to manage that catch and also, you know. Uh, and the keys, uh, you know, I'm not really yeah, know. And, and, and <laughs> you have the resources because catch is going to affect your RAM. You know, it's going to affect your your memory, uh, you know, stack. Okay. okay. So yeah, yeah, you you have to make make sure that you know your cache doesn't grow, you know, uh, too much, <laughs> because then you know it, it's going to be another problem, you know, to 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 manage the memory, uh, to manage to manage the, that that that, <laughs> that 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 cache stack. Yeah. Uh, oh. But yeah, that that but that those decorators in Python 
oh man, you know, they, they're really, you know, uh, very, very, very useful. Uh, I remember a, a scroll catch and also scroll uh, property, okay? Which is, you know, I don't remember right off the bat, you know, what it does exactly, but it also does, you know, a very particular, you know, uh, function, interactive with functions, you know, to give you uh, some kind of, uh, you know, some, you know, uh, get, get, give you some efficiency in the way that functions, you know, work. No, that's, that's very great, but you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All to right. me, caching is a new concept completely. I don't know, like, you, we are not used to that. Maybe because yeah. we are not familiar to running that thing over and over. Like, in China, Correct. like, more, hey, we are in front of the user, you know, you shouldn't promise. Yeah, and, 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 and here, you know, uh, this chapter is more about, you know, uh, DevOps, Okay, you know how to how to get more performance in a in a production environment. Okay, so there are different techniques than usually the development part that you know we're always you know uh, uh, learning for. Uh, so but but yeah, that uh that 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 trick the catch trick is very is is very handy, very handy. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, thanks, Ricardo. I will end. All right.